Welcome everyone. I am as always Raphael and today I want to talk about how you can find your personal software developer job to move to Switzerland. I'm making this video because so many of you have asked me for this for a couple of weeks and uh, I always thought it's kind of obvious how to do it but um, that's why I want to share my insights and best practices here. There are quite a few job platforms out there. And the one that I think you should always start with, even though it's not a Swiss one, is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is definitely the biggest and the most versatile job platform, even for Switzerland. And it's also particularly interesting because uh, it will give you more jobs that are suitable for you as an expat. So maybe you don't speak any German or any French, the two most important languages in Switzerland. Uh, you speak English or something different and you want to find a job. So it, it will actually help if you have a more international or English speaking organization that is fine with you not speaking the local language yet. And LinkedIn tends to give you a bit more of these because it's such a huge international platform. Another benefit of LinkedIn is they just have such a big pool of job applications. You can already also see who is posting a job ad and you have a lot of filters and a lot of data in the background, especially if you have a premium subscription, you will get a bit more of their insights and data basically um, more or less for free um, that will help you find a really good job. <clears throat> the first thing, you should actually start out with is of course type in Switzerland here in the location. My recommendation is I would type in the country. You can of course also type in um, Zurich, Switzerland. If you already know, you definitely want to go to Zurich, but I don't want to. Uh, I would not recommend to do this actually because you shouldn't limit yourself just to Zurich because you heard Zurich is nice or maybe you've visited Zurich or the same goes for Geneva or pretty much any other cities. I don't even want to, you know, uh, be too biased here. These are just the two very big uh, international cities in Switzerland. But definitely I would recommend to go for all of Switzerland because that one dream job might be in a different city, might be more in the countryside or it might be in another part of Switzerland like Lugano or Basel or Bern or Lucerne and so on uh, where you're not even looking um, because everything is changing all the time. Some regions that were formerly not so well known are getting more and more interesting each year in Switzerland. So type in the whole country and then of course if you are used to your LinkedIn or search engines in general you will already know that you should play around with the title here a bit. So you can start with software developer or maybe also software engineer. And then if you want to be more focused, you can do something like mobile engineer or maybe full stack developer. Um, <clears throat> definitely play around with these titles for two reasons. A, you might actually find something that's pretty good uh, where you're not the real specialist yet, but you find it really amazing. So for example, you might be you know, interested in, let's say, data science um, or data engineering, and uh, you're not a pro yet, but you're willing to learn, and you might find a lot of great jobs in this field, even though you're not a pro yet, um, as long as you're willing to learn, it's, it might be a good idea. Um, but of course, you could also do the same. You could say, well, I'm a mobile engineer, and I don't want to start something new at the moment. I want to become even better. I want to move from senior to lead developer. Then maybe quite the opposite strategy might actually be better. And also be aware that Swiss companies have a bit of a tendency that they want you to be a specialist. So um, in doubt, I would actually go for something where you're already relatively proficient. Um, it is often easier to come in as a specialist and then move on from there. Even if you are actually open to learning something new, which is generally a good thing, it might be easier to start with something that you already have experience in for a couple of years. It will just make the initial um, burden for the company who might be hiring you a bit lower, they might trust you more and so on. Definitely play around with this. 
and also be aware that sometimes it will give you bogus results. So uh, if I type in mobile engineer, I sometimes see jobs uh, that are not about mobile engineering at all. They're maybe remotely related to also working with mobile devices or something. But uh, every now and then, like in the older days of search engines, you might actually get nonsense results. So that is also a reason why you should play around with this term a bit. But as you can see, I typed in mobile engineer. And if we look at the first couple of results here, they actually look like fairly good results. They seem to be actually about what I'm looking for. And uh, also there are 670 results, which I think is quite a lot given that Switzerland is not such a super huge country. So that's quite encouraging. Um, also shows you that the job market, at least right now, it's still quite open, even though we're more in a recession and a time where everything is going a bit slower in Europe and maybe many parts of the world. So this is, I think, a more encouraging result here. Um, so definitely you should be able to find something nice if you bring enough time. Often it also is a good idea to play around with these other filters. So for example, a date posted can be interesting because uh, very often companies, they post something and then they leave it there forever and keep reposting it, but they might not be actively looking anymore um, either because they're just generally fishing for candidates and they're not actively recruiting or they're already interviewing and uh, the chances of getting that slot are relatively low. So it might sometimes make sense to actually limit it to the past week, I would say, um, or maybe the past month, but probably more the past week. So relatively fresh new job postings, because also if they're reposted, this will actually count in there. So very often if companies cannot fill a role, they will repost it anyways. So you're not really missing out over uh, reposted job ads most of the time, at least not if you repeat this, uh, let's say once a week or twice a week and keep looking uh, again and again. Um, then the next filter that might be interesting is, uh, unless you're a junior, might, you might say, well, I'm, I don't want to do entry level internships and so on. I don't want a mid senior level. And then, yeah, maybe of course, higher levels. Um, you can always take a look at it. I wouldn't really filter for the company. You can certainly do that, but uh, I think it often doesn't make sense because you might not even know most of them. And uh, I generally don't recommend to just go for a big company like Siemens or Accenture or something like this, just because you've heard of them before, or maybe they exist in your home country uh, because very often uh, they might not have a very interesting role for you in Switzerland. Switzerland is very, very specific. So even if they do super interesting stuff in a country you know very well, they might not have anything interesting for you in Switzerland. And uh, uh, the other way from the other perspective, some not so well-known company might have a super nice job and a super chill culture. So I wouldn't limit myself here in terms of a company. More interesting I think is whether you wanna work remote, hybrid or on-site. Um, remote might be a good idea if you don't want to actually move to Switzerland yet, you just want to try it out or you're uh, just basically looking for things that somehow relate a bit to Switzerland and its neighboring countries, but are not even too focused on that country itself. Um, so as you can see here, this is quite a limitation from 123 results. We're going down to about uh, 20 and very often uh, you see these sort of talent pools uh, I think Clever Tech is one of them actually, where they're um, basically like a distributed consulting company and they, they're not necessarily from Switzerland at all. They're just basically uh, trying to get new talents into their pool and um, neither your clients nor that company might have any real relationship with Switzerland at all. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you filter for remote, um, you're often not really looking for a Swiss job, but it's kind of a random job that's maybe in the European time zone. And also, <clears throat> I think it's worth mentioning that if you actually want to integrate in Switzerland and you know live here more long-term or at least uh, try to find it out for yourself, it might make sense to have a bit more interaction with people. So you might, for example, wanna go for hybrid, 
um, it's, which kind of forces you to go to the office every now and then. So you get to know people, you might make new friends, you get to learn about the Swiss culture and so on and so on. Uh, so this can actually be a good thing, especially in your first one or two years of moving to Switzerland. And of course, you can even go for on-site if you're fine with that. Uh, some jobs might actually require that, especially in some regulated uh, businesses like finance, banking, very often you still have to be on site or again have to be on site most of the time for policy reasons. So depending on where you're coming from, I would maybe first um, try all of these options so that you get the really nice jobs. But of course, you can also limit it if you say, well, I care more about working remote than the best paid job or the most interesting tasks. Another interesting feature is easy apply. Um, I'm, I'm a bit split about it. So easy apply is basically a feature where you can say, okay, I just click this one button and then I don't have to go to their website. I don't have to upload my CV again and fill everything out and uh, type in a motivation letter and stuff like that. But basically everything happens directly here on LinkedIn. The cool thing is it makes it really fast. You just type easy apply and then um, you can change your uh, phone number, email address and so on. The bad thing is that sometimes your application might not get the uh, necessary attention because they get so many applications in these cases because it's very easy for people to click apply. So they might actually get tons and tons of applications from all around the world. If you look at this here, um, a lot of them have close to a hundred. Um, this is not a good example there. They only have eight applications, but we saw it up here, 55, 360 applicants. Um, some of them really get a lot of applications. So they might actually half ignore your application. So be careful with this. It might be, uh, it might be good to actually apply through their website. Um, if they, if they have it here, if they, if you can find it out and not only go for easy apply. But on the other hand, if you're a bit lazy or you're very early in your search and you just wanna play around a bit, this might be an easy entry. So you could actually go for easy apply first and um, only filter uh, for jobs that allow this. But be aware, as you saw with easy apply, we have, I think 50 results here and without it, it's 120 results. So it will actually exclude a lot of um, job adverts from your search just upfront. And I wouldn't necessarily do that because in my own experience, uh, there's a lot of interesting job adverts, or at least if you read the text that do not allow easy apply. And I think it would often be a pity if you uh, fully excluded all these, um, even if it of course means a bit more work you have to put into your application. And then finally, there's a few more filters. I think most of them are not really interesting. Um, job type, this is often not very reliable. So even if you're looking for a contract, like sort of a freelance contract, um, recruiters tend to not fill this out very carefully. So I wouldn't necessarily filter for that even if you actually look for a temporary contract. Um, and the same goes for location. As I said before, I wouldn't exclude uh, certain locations because maybe you don't even know that there's this super good job in uh, Aarau <laughs> um, or um, you don't even know where Volketswil is and so on. So I wouldn't really tick this unless you, you are joining your partner in Switzerland and they already live in Zurich, then okay, maybe you want to go for this. Um, but generally keep yourself open industry job function. I don't know. I've never used these personally. I think uh, I would only use this if I had like a thousand results or something, because once again, this is often not carefully filled out by recruiters. So this might be um, limiting yourself uh, in an unintended way. Um, this might be a bit more interesting to titles, but once again here, there's often a wide variety of what people call a job title. So I wouldn't necessarily use this as an important criterion and so on. So this is pretty much it. Um, I think this should give you a great start into doing your job search in Switzerland and also getting a feeling for what the market is looking for. There are definitely certain developer roles that are quite common in Switzerland. Like there's a lot of 
uh, backend development going on in my experience. So Java and C sharp and so on. This there, there will be a lot of roles in this fields, whereas in some other fields uh, like um, uh, PHP development, for example, even though that's also backend development, usually uh, you might find less roles in Switzerland. I don't really know why that is often the case. I think this is very often it's just random um, historical development. But definitely go check out LinkedIn first. It will give you a great feeling and overview of what the Swiss software developer market is like. Yeah, it's typically easy for people who do not necessarily speak the local language to use it. And then if that is still not good enough for you, you can still move on to some of these other job websites I'm going to talk about in one of the upcoming videos. If you like this video, I would really love if you could click that like button and also the subscribe button, because as I said, I'm going to post a few more videos about this topic, finding a software developer job in Switzerland. And if you click the notification bell, it will give you a notification about every single video I post. So you're not going to miss out on any of those. Also, please share all your questions and comments. Please share if uh, something has worked very well for you in your job search. Also, if something was unclear or if you think that LinkedIn is absolutely not the best platform, but instead some other platform is the best one, please let us know as well. I'm going to make a follow up video and share this with the whole community. So you're going to have some awesome work colleagues in your future software developer job in Switzerland. I am Raphael as always, and see you in one of my next videos.